Good morning, George Hepworth here, Grover Park Consulting. Let's build Mike's mobile library. Today we're going to complete the remaining elements on our publication screen and in the process we'll learn a little bit about how do we how we identify records and fields in Power Apps and how that might be slightly different from what you're used to seeing in a Microsoft Access relational database application. Let's get started. I've already opened the Microsoft 365 Power Apps development area and loaded the publication screen. Previously, we identified all of the elements in the gallery and the filters across the top. We have a few remaining items to look at, in particular the icons which help us navigate. This icon here, which is the edit icon that helps us navigate. And we have a couple of errors that we need to resolve today. We'll do all of that together. In the process, we're going to explore somewhat the way Power Apps handles records and fields and records, which might be slightly different from what you would expect from our experience as Access developers. I'll get to that shortly. First, let's look at the home icon. The home icon has on its on select event the command to navigate to a specific screen. Specific screen that it navigates to is our startup, which has the main menu. If you click on this icon, you select it. Its on select event takes us directly to the startup screen. The plus button or the add button icon is a little more complicated, as you can see. It does several things first, but eventually, as its last step, it does navigate to a different screen. The screen to which it navigates is the Edit Publication screen. We use the Edit Publication screen for two purposes. We can either add or edit publications on the Edit Publication screen. It's different from the Browse screen in that the Browse screen is read-only. It's an edit screen which allows us to make changes. On this edit screen, there is supposed to be a form. Right now, that form does not exist, and we're going to have to create it today. However, the relevant part here is that we set that publication form into new mode. There are different modes for forms. One is new. If you set a form to new mode, then it allows us to add new records to the data source behind that form. I'll come back and talk about these variables in a moment. First, I want to actually go to my existing production version of this application, bring back that form so we can work with it. Bear with me while I make that happen. Now we're looking at the production version where the form that we need is already in existence. This is the edit screen. It has what we call a form in Power Apps. A form is somewhat different from a form in Access, so let's talk about that really quick. A form is a control that you use to focus on a single item in a record set or a record source. It's the equivalent in some ways to a form and access in single view, but beyond that element of single versus multiple item, there really isn't a lot that we want to compare. That's a trap that we want to avoid. Rather, the idea is that a form allows us to focus on a single item and we can either edit it or add new items through it. So it has two modes I'm going to show you here. You can set it to edit mode, which this one is now. You can set it to new mode. I just mentioned the fact that when we use the add item icon on the publication screen, we set this form to new mode. View mode is a read-only mode. When we want to add a new record to our underlying data source, 
we put it in new mode. When we want to edit an existing record, we put it in edit mode. If we simply want to give the user a read-only view of a single record as opposed to a read-only view of a gallery which has multiple items, we can use the view mode. A bit of housekeeping before we move the form, actually. I want to move the header first. So I'm going to select all of the items or objects which currently populate the header and copy them as a group with control C select the screen control V to drop them they fall onto the screen in the wrong position let's make sure we get this set up correctly unfortunately I have not been able to figure out a way to set the X and Y references of an object directly on the screen to the screen itself, other than by using just the uh, X and Y directly. So it will be set to zero. Oops, I should not have them all selected. I don't want them all selected. I only want the label. It's selected, set to zero on the X direction. And Y, so far in my experience with, with Power Apps, Things drop in at uh, this 40 position vertically. I'm going to set it to zero, and it puts it back into place. The other controls on that label reposition themselves because I have set them, their X and Y, in relationship to the actual label and items on it. Here, for example, I have set the X position using the X position of the icon in front of it plus its width. I could do it again, and I touched on this in a previous video, by adding together the two widths, and both will have the same effect. That one dropped into the correct position. Now let's get the form. Make sure I have selected the form. I can do that here in my navigation pane, and you can see it highlights the form. I will do the control C to copy it. Now, because all of these other objects are contained within that form, when I copy, they will also come along. Again, control C to copy. Switch to the development version. Click onto the screen to tell Power Apps where I want to drop that. Control V to paste that into this screen. It's not quite in the right position, so let's make sure we have that set up. I think we have this same problem where uh, you know, it's dropping it in 40 from the left, set it back to zero, and now the top edge, is, as you can see, is just slightly off. So we'll look at the Y, and Y is set to Distance. So we'll set it to the label edit library title dot height and that will move it back to where we want it. Okay, now we have our form in place on the edit screen. If we go back to the publication screen, You can see that the two errors we had here have been resolved. We'll look at this. On select property, the publications form, named form publications, is now in place on this screen. And the error that reflected that is, is no longer there. And the other error, which was uh, being raised here is also resolved for the same reason. Okay. We still have errors, but we've gotten rid of those two. Now, let's examine the rest of the onSelect event for the add item icon. This is the technical part of the presentation that I wanted to focus on today primarily. 
we are looking at variables set when we want to add a new item to our underlying table, which is the publications table. We set a variable called publication. It is a record. We set a variable called cover photo name, which is a text. It's a string of text. Even though they're both defined as variables, there is implicit data typing going on behind the scenes. Same is true of condition. It is also a record. Genre is also a record. And publisher ID is a record. Media type is a record. Why are these defined as records when cover photo name is defined as a string? Let's look at where they come from. The publication is, in fact, the entire record. We're looking at the selected item is 1984, or here the selected item is bad dirt. So when we set a variable to, to the publication, it is going to be the entire record. When we set the cover photo name, it is looking at a field in the publication table. To sort this out, we need to look at the SharePoint list itself, or our table in database terms, and the items in it. Now, the cover photo link is a text field, and it contains an, a URL pointing to the location of that image, which is the cover photo. However, the three, excuse me, the four other fields in our table, which are set in that uh, on select event, are in fact lookup fields. And you can possibly see that as I hover the cursor over it, it pops out the small, almost invisible underline. And if I click on that, the link takes us to this table. Actually, more specifically, it takes us to this record in this table. It doesn't show the ID value here, which is a shortcoming in my opinion, but there's the title, which is the field we don't use. There's the actual publication genre, which is literary fiction, the sort order, and it offers the attachments fields, even though we have no attachments. So we can understand by seeing what happens when we actually ask to look at that particular value that we are looking at entire record. The ID for that record is only one part of it. If we go back one more time, we can see then that we are looking at a linked record through the lookup field to the other table which is the publications genre table. We don't find any data because we have set it to blank. We're doing it that we're doing that because we want to have a blank new record in our form to add, excuse me, we want to have all blanks for those values in our new in our form because we're going to add a new record. Let me go over that again because I'm not sure I said that really clearly. When we click the add icon to add a new record, we set all of these variables to blank or nothing, no data. We do that in order to set up the form like values and all of the controls so that we can start to add a new record. The type of variable is going to be dependent on how we set that variable in the form. That'll be the last thing we look at in this session. Let's close our editing window, play it, and click on the add icon to add a new item. When I click it, all of the code in that on select event that we just looked at will be executed and we will navigate to 
the edit screen. Now we're looking at the edit screen and as you can see the controls where we would add new values are blank except for the drop downs and the reason the drop downs are not blank is that they're showing the default values. We do have a couple of more errors that we'll resolve those later. Uh, those are because we were referencing controls that I haven't yet brought across from production to this uh, development version. What we need to do is look at how each of those variables are set in this form. Let's start with one of the drop-downs, literary genre. The way forms work is they have what is called a card. A card is an object which is bound to or linked to a field in our data source. So the data, the, the field, the data field for this card is the genre ID. And the same will be true for these other cards. They will be linked to a data field, media condition, and so on. The form itself has a data source. If we select the form and the outline lights up to let me know that I selected the form. The form has its own data source, which is the publications table or table publication. Each of the fields in publications table is used as a data field for one of the controls or one of the cards on this form. Within each of the cards, we have an input control. This one, the publication title, is a text input. It's you can identify it visually by the fact that it has a border around it that indicates that it's available for, for entry. The other controls are also text, text input fields. I used the drop down control as I said in a previous session. I prefer the drop downs over the combo boxes, although combo boxes do offer the ability to search. We're working with very short lists in our drop downs, so to me it's it's 50-50 in, in, in the searching department and a lot more convenient to work with, so I use drop downs. But these are also input controls. I'm going to go back here to the publication title. The default value for the publication title is the same as the default value for the card in which it resides. So if we select that card and then look at its default value, we see that its default value is this item, publication title, because right now we're looking at a new record we set the form into new mode and there's no record. Publication title is empty. We see nothing, even though it will be set to this item, the selected record in this table. The same is true for our other cards. They all have a default value set to this item, whatever that field is. And then the input field is set to the default of its parent. The parent of the in input box is the card. Literary genre has as its default this item, genre ID, so there's no value because we're looking at a new record. The default value for the dropdown is slightly different. We have a conditional for the default value of the dropdown, which is the input control. Depending on where we came from on the previous screen, 
we'll either have a value in VAR publication or it will be blank. If it's a new record that we're going to enter, it will be blank. If we're editing an existing record, there will be a value in VAR publication and that value will be a particular record from the underlying table. With that understanding, let's look at how the if clause works syntactically. It says if the value of VAR publication is not blank, and we use the bang is blank to indicate not is blank. So if VAR publication is not blank, do a lookup. Go to the publication genre table, find the genre ID, the publication genre ID in publication genre table, which is which matches this item, and this item will refer to whatever item is in this VAR publication record. We will find the genre ID of this item and use its value to look up the appropriate publication genre. The way this will work then is if we pass in a blank, we drop through and return nothing. So there is no default value. If there is a record and we're editing that record, then we're going to find the publication genre which is already used for that record by doing lookup from the genre ID to the genre ID and bringing back that record. Note that it offers the first item in our drop down as the default. We could set the default to something else and in version 2 I will actually do that. Uh, what I wanted to do next was look at the items in that drop down because that's an important part of how this works also. The items that are used to populate this control, this drop down, are the items from the publications genre table sorted by columns on sort order. That allows us to put the items in the order we choose independently of their alphabetical sequence. A comes before B unless we have a sort order that tells us otherwise. And it doesn't use the ID field, the primary key field, to sort which would be another default option. We, we want it to sort in a particular fashion the, our items in the order we want them to be seen. The value of this control is publication genre. That's the field that we're going to display in this dropdown. Remember we're looking at an entire record, not a single column or field from the record. This is where this idea of records versus fields becomes critical to understanding what we're doing here in a different way. Being Access developers, me, we might want to bind or link our drop downs or our combo boxes to the primary key or the foreign key value. And in fact, when I first set this up, that's basically what I did. I put the publication genre ID in there and said that's the value that I want to use with this drop down. Not understanding until some time later that what I was looking at was an entire record bound to that control. And all I am doing here by picking a value is the value that will appear to the user in that drop down, which is the string or the text value that I want to use. That's a little bit long winded, but I think it's important enough to understand that it's worthwhile to go into it in some depth. The same is true, of course, for our other three drop downs. The card is bound, the data field for the card is media condition ID, which is this one. The value for the control is the value that we're going to display for that particular record as a whole. And we want to display the text value media condition. Media condition ID is available because it's part of the same record and we can use that in other 
manipulations. But because of the fact that these drop downs are bound to the entire record and not just to a single field as we would assume coming from the access world, we can display any of these values that we want knowing that because the ID field is part of that same record, we always have access to it. And you can see that all of the other fields, which are the default fields created by SharePoint, are exposed and offered and possible. It is possible for us to use them, even though we probably would never want to do that. And of course, sort order is one of those fields. So I think we've pretty much covered the essential things that I wanted to cover in this session, and we have actually gone on a little longer than I would like. So I'm going to wrap it up here, even though we haven't completely finished out this form. We've covered the essential points. We brought our form across. We set it up so that it is in the right position on our screen. We looked at its data source, the item which is displayed. We looked at the difference between fields in a record and records and how Power Apps tends to want to use records in places where an access developer might expect to see a single field, a foreign key field more specifically. With that, I'm going to wrap it up. I will come back in the next session, expand on some of the other factors in this form, and probably revisit this point about the difference between the record and the field again, just to make sure that, it, that we drive it home. As always, if you like what you see in these videos, please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. See you later.